and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Israel's High Court has just issued a verdict that may set all kinds of new legal precedent. The courts have just ruled that five Palestinian women who are allegedly close relatives of Hamas members will be allowed into Israel so that they can receive life-saving cancer treatment. Now from a legal perspective, this is a massive decision for a number of reasons. First of all, it's perhaps the biggest reversal of Israeli government policy in quite a number of years. The state originally blocked these women's request for cancer treatment on the basis that it would put pressure on Hamas leaders to end violence against Israel. But according to the High Court's justices, not only is this policy illegal, it doesn't even seem to actually serve those means. Judge Uzi Fogelman especially noted that the women, who are critically ill, did not pose a security risk and that the government's original ban just isn't justified because you can't use human lives as bargaining chips. Critics from the government, however, say that this is a decision that will put Israeli security at risk. Right-wing Israeli MK Bezalel Smotrich has accused the courts of making a, quote, terrible and dangerous deal to liberate terrorists, end quote. It should be mentioned, however, that these women are in advanced stages of cancer and have never themselves apparently been involved in acts of terror or violence. These women come from the West Bank, where no medical care for their advanced stages of cancer is available. Rights groups have been petitioning the courts for years to allow them into East Jerusalem hospitals for emergency treatment. At this time, dozens of similar cases from Gaza are also still awaiting trial. Many of them are likely hoping that this new court decision will give them the green light that they too have been waiting for so that they can receive life-saving medical care. Israel's airport authority has announced that disciplinary procedures to fire a guard at Ben Gurion Airport have been initiated after the guard in question sprayed a Druze family with tear gas. According to reports, a security guard at the airport just outside Tel Aviv stopped the Druze family at the entrance and demanded to see their passports. The family of 16, including two children from the town of Daliat al Carmel, was still in their minivan when they were stopped. One family member reportedly presented an IDF card, which was rejected on the insistence that passports be presented. When the first guard claimed that one passport was still missing, a dispute began, which drew in a second guard. The second guard was carrying tear gas and asked threateningly if the family wanted to be sprayed. Roni Aboud, one of the Druze family members at the scene, told Haaretz reporters that, quote, I was surprised and didn't think he would actually spray us, so I said, yes, spray. I did nothing illegal and suddenly he started spraying, end quote. Further, Aboud says that no medical attention was offered to the family after the incident occurred, despite even children falling victim to the gas. An investigation has been launched, but this incident just exacerbates the divide between Israel and the Israeli Druze community following the passage of the nation-state law. Though proponents of the law say it solidifies Israel's Jewish character, critics say it relegates minorities like the Arabs and the Druze to a second-class status. In response, several Druze soldiers and officers in the IDF have already resigned in protest, and Arab MKs have been accused of working with the PA to exclude Israel from functions at the United Nations. The Israeli army is stocking up on a new fleet of advanced, high-precision rockets. Among this new arsenal is a slew of classified rockets as well as an upgraded version of the IDF's current ocular system, which is already in use. The Defense Ministry sealed the deal, valued at hundreds of millions of dollars, with Israeli weapons makers at IMI Systems. The new rockets have ranges from 30 to 150 kilometers and are guaranteed to hit targets with unprecedented accuracy. The upgraded Ocular system in particular is generally hailed as capable of launching several rockets within the span of a minute with cutting-edge precision. In the scope of things, this is a fairly sizable purchase from the Defense Department. It also explains another bit of related news, that Israel has just risen from last year's ranking of the world's top military spending countries. Last year, the country spent roughly $19.6 billion in its military. And indeed, the IDF is believed to be the single most expensive line item in the country's overall annual budget. So clearly, when it comes to security, Israel isn't afraid to put its money where its mouth is. A 25-strong pod of bottlenose dolphins has just been spotted off the coast of Ashdod, and thanks to the quick filming of the park's authorities, Guy Levian, we all get to enjoy it. The Mediterranean bottlenose dolphin is a protected, vulnerable species, according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature. And luckily for us, the Israeli coast constitutes an important habitat. Now this pod of dolphins, which was apparently playing alongside the boat with a young calf, is supposedly known to Parks Authority officials already, and has often been spotted near the coast. This video was taken during a routine survey of marine mammals, and hopefully they'll continue to call the Israeli shore home for a long time.
That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.